Let's see if we can get people on here first. Whew. Living my best life right now, just drinking some wine, having a good time. We see if Adam comes in. What's going on? We're gonna have a nice discussion. Ah, I see you there, Adam. Here, let me see if I can. What is up, Adam? Justin bro? Brown. How you doing, man? Oh, dude, I'm doing so good. That's awesome. Can can you hear me just fine? I can hear you great, loud and clear. Really nice, uh, nice signal here. Okay, cool. Last time I did this, like the the volume on my end was was really low, so I was like, I gotta fix that. Cool. So, Justin Brown, how you doing, man? Dude, it's been really good since I last seen you years ago. Yeah, it's been years. It seems like time time's flown by, man. Yeah, I'm really, really excited to uh, to be here, man. I was uh, trying to connect with you. I was going to connect, try hit you up. Net last time I went to the Bay Area, but then I never ended up going. So it's it's been a it's been a minute. Yeah. How you how yeah. you doing like down there? Man, Southern California is a uh, is a beast with music, and it's quite the uh, it's quite the experience down here. It's it's a it's a dog eat dog world down here in the music. Uh, yeah, I can only imagine. Yeah, that's crazy. But the gigging is great. Lots of opportunity and lots of like-minded musicians who are goal-oriented and trying to do do the dang thing. And um, but I actually won't be down here much longer. No, where where are you headed? I'm moving moving back to Oregon after all these years. Really? Yeah, I'm moving to to Oregon to be near family and still do music. Obviously, uh, you know, that's but. Yeah. That's awesome. No, I'm happy for you, man. I mean, you can make music anywhere, but like as long as you're around with people that you know that you know love and support you, like that's all that matters, you know. Totally, totally. So, I got a really nice studio set up too, so it's it's gonna be nice to have more space, less rent, near family. Uh, it's it's a win win in every avenue, other than just the accessibility to like really big gatherings of music, yeah. you know. But I can, I can work my way around that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Dude, so, well, tell me. No, go ahead. I, give me a quick update on you, man. It's been years since I've uh, since I've jumped in with Justin Brown. Man, I've been, I've been like, I kind of quadrupled down on the the winery scene, and uh, I was just all about it, and I just, I just love it. You know, like I just kind of. I was sitting down just figuring out like what I want out of this like this music journey and everything and I was just like I just wanted to play at just the most beautiful places I can with like mm -hmm. you know you know the 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 coolest people and stuff and that's just what I've been setting out to do and yes uh, you know um last month my my EP kind of went out um I had a you know this the CD release at a winery and it was pretty nice but unfortunately with you know situations of like it, it got canceled <laughs> but you know it was still good to, uh, you know I still got a whole bunch of love and support and everything so I I can't complain at all but um mm -hmm. yeah just and now I'm I'm doing you know concerts and um I'm I'm trying I'm doing you know things like these this and like talking to people and uh other creative people and seeing how they're you, you know they're holding it up in situations like this and and you know everyone's kind of in the same boat and everyone's like more than happy to help and support each other so it's it's really cool yes oh dude so excited to hear that brother yeah so excited yeah. you're in a great area for that i mean that's wine country so yeah yeah above up, up, up north here i got tired of personally at the one point I was like playing at bars and like the music that I kind of have is just, is too mellow, too quiet for kind of bars and no one was really paying attention. And I was just like, what am I doing? So kind of, I switched over to the, to the winery scene. So, yeah. Yeah. In Southern Oregon, they have, uh, 30 new wineries that opened up in the last three years. So. Hey Alex. Uh, Sorry, I'm it's really like a, Whoa! What's up, Alex? Alex Fry. Yeah, she. We were on there a couple weeks ago. We were talking, and we had an awesome discussion. 
Oh, that's wonderful. Well, yeah. welcome, fellow musicians coming in. Yeah. Yeah, I like this. So, yeah, brother, what, what's uh, how do you want this to go? What's what's the what's our you want to? Well, let's start with um, let let's go with the you know vintage Adam Adam Knight. Like, how did you get started? Okay, okay. We're like, what's, what's your quick... what's your story? What's my story? Got it. Um, long story short. Oh, we got to uh, take your time. No, no long story short. Okay, no long story short. Southern <laughs> Oregon, born and raised, country boy, through and through, and yet uh, wanted to be soul, R&B, like pop, uh, blues singer. Uh, my, my environment, though, in Southern Oregon didn't necessarily uh, influence and want to help my situation of wanting to be a singer it's it's such a it, it it's an area that there's just not a lot of people that are successful in the music industry so there wasn't a lot of um folks to ask and talk to about this and really you know question hey or how are you doing it or where are you gigging there just wasn't a whole lot of that going on in southern oregon yeah um and so you know fast forward years later until uh, i'm a you know, 23, 24, I'm 31 now. So 20, 20, 23, uh, 22, I moved to California and start my journey in the Bay Area uh, of just kind of doing some self-growth work, doing a nature connection program called Weaving Earth. And just through all of that, I really committed to being a singer because my whole childhood, I wanted to be a singer. I, I sang, I was in choir, I got a guitar when I was 12 and wrote songs, performed at the talent shows. And yet I still didn't feel like I was doing anything. Uh, if I was staying in that area, I needed to, to go where other musicians were mm -hmm. and, and we musicians that were doing it and really trying. And so the Bay area is an amazing place for that. As you know, you live in the Bay and North Bay and, um, found myself in this program surrounded by other musicians and surrounded by people doing really good work and doing um, coaching work and just a lot of entrepreneurial folk. And uh, it really, um, it really helped me make the decision that I wanted to be a full-time musician mm -hmm. and I could do this. And so I created the stage name Adam Knight. Uh, it's, it, it, it really, helped me commit to that, you know, by claiming myself as Adam Knight and telling people I'm Adam Knight and this is why I'm Adam Knight. And um, it almost forced me into that decision after I let the ball roll for a little while. Mm -hmm. And with that, I was super lucky to meet a select few musicians, uh, John Foray being one of them, um, Andrew McKenzie, uh, Justin Brown, and uh, a select few musicians that helped me gig and helped me become a front man, helped me be a performer. And what does it mean to play live with just your guitar? What does it mean to play live with six people in a band? What does it mean to record in a studio? And what does that look like? And uh, wow, the process of producing a song from point A to point B. So I was really lucky to be mentored and guided and uh, taken um, along the ride with these other musicians that helped me uh, do it and start my own path. Mm -hmm. So through the Bay Area, through those connections of playing live, meeting you, gigging with you, because I gig with you quite a bit, um, we had some fun times, and gigging with other musicians, I learned what I liked and what I didn't like. I learned what I really wanted to do and I met Justin Buer, who is actually somebody that I grew up with, somebody that uh, also is from Southern Oregon and went on his own journey. Mm -hmm. Side side story there. He's actually the one who walked by there a second ago. Um, <laughs> Justin and I reconnected after years, and he is a producer. So a whole nother 
way to meet someone in the music industry. I was really in the live scene. I was getting my live chops, getting the funk and soul, getting the band, getting the gigging at the bars and doing a couple of the winery circuits and uh, really just grinding the live scene. Boom, boom, room in San Francisco, just enjoying what it meant to play live, but I didn't have any content. I didn't have anything online. I was just posting on an Adam Knight page and I was just saying like, oh, the music's coming. It's coming someday. And I was trying my best to do it with John Foray. I was trying my best to record with no budget. This man was so kind to just like on his free time to record some of my content. And yet Justin comes in, opens up a whole new side of things for me mm -hmm. uh, to singer songwriter and producer coming together to create content at the same time start from scratch and record and we co-wrote the song i've got the gold at his house in healdsburg california and um that opened up a whole avenue of him learning production at the same time he he was already a, a talented producer and already a techie guy, but yet mm -hmm. he he was still brand new to it, just like me. We were we were starting from scratch together. Wait, what's Spotify and how do you upload stuff and what's distribution mean? And wow, you got to get publishing on your songs. How do we do that? So lots of googling, lots of asking friends, lots of just getting into uh, education mode of like what does it mean to release a song, mm -hmm. not just record it, but release the damn thing. Mm -hmm. and and try to do it successfully so thank god i had justin because he really is like left brain like let's let's learn so he really learned and read all the forums and all the little things on how do you release and the, the little strategies and oh wow we can pay a little money to get on this playlist and little things like that so after we released walking backwards my first single and then i've got the gold the original I've got the gold version was on a SoundCloud playlist that Justin actually paid $30 to get on. It's called uh, Ox London and it's actually a pretty big playlist and uh, but it's SoundCloud and SoundCloud is, a, you know, it's, it has its opinions and it has its ways that it's use. Um, it's coming back up in the world, but yet at that time SoundCloud was kind of looked down upon to a lot mm -hmm. of, so but it's still very useful. I'm so grateful for SoundCloud. And anyway, Justin puts it on a playlist and this producer, a uh, DJ named Shobi, finds the song. And he says, hey guys, love the track. Uh, I do house, chill house, deep house. I want to remix that. And we're like, uh, sure, why not? Like, what's that look like? What do we do? He's like, oh, you just give me, send me the stems and I'll, I'll do my thing. And then we'll release it under I've Got the Gold Shobi Remix. And it'll still show up on your profile, show up on mine. It'll be a collaboration. So we're like, uh, okay, why not? So we do it. And we didn't know that Shobi had some really cool connections. The guy mm -hmm. had quite a bit of connections in the industry. And uh, after him producing the song, he released it. Uh, under a label, under with our consent, we all agreed to this, um, under a label called Casual Jam Records out of London. And a uh, pretty good-sized label, Mr. Revels Casual Jam Records, is a is also a YouTube channel with like 4 million subscribers. It's a, a quite a big thing happening over there in the electronic dance music scene. Mm -hmm. And that is how I birthed my way into the EDM scene. When, when I did that, when Shobi Remix and after that, I've got the gold was remixed three more times and all of those remixes were, were signed to the label as well, the same one. And uh, the, all those remixes combined and the original have over 30 million streams now. And uh, that paved a, a massive way for my voice to be in the industry and now i get contacted by djs every week producers every week if not a few times uh, a month to sing on an instrumental that they created or create a track together from scratch and so when that happened justin and i kept making music together 
but all of a sudden I had three or four other guys that I'm collaborating with. Mm -hmm. And Justin then and me made a plan for me to buy my own recording gear because Justin was my, was my studio at that time. He was my, not only the producer, not only my, my, my collaborator, but he was the studio. He had the gear. So um, I purchased and invested in really high quality microphones and interfaces and computer and, and cables and all of a sudden, I obtained like twelve to fifteen thousand dollars worth of sound gear on credit, mm-hmm. and um, started recording vocals for other producers, and then started to release them. And that kept paving a way deeper and deeper into the EDM industry, and a little farther away from the soul funk industry, and a little farther away from the the you know acoustic vibe that I had, and was hard leaning into the EDM industry. So fast forward about two years of doing that and acquiring, you know, up to, let's say, like 35 million streams now total. I now am wanting to go back. I'm, so my album that's going to be coming out this summer, it's a 13 to 15 song album. It's going to be a good a substantial size. Mm-hmm. Um, has a mixture. It has gritty blues, boom clap pop feel it's got an acoustic it's got a couple ballads it's got like a weird like a cool chill edm track on it Mm. um it's got a little bit of everything and i'm really glad i'm doing it this way because it's it's all of me it's all of what i've been uh working towards and um so many people so many people are purists when it comes to the music industry, which I highly respect. There's a way that people can commit to something, a sound, and they do it, no matter the opportunities that come. I, on the other hand, said yes to some opportunities that steered me away from my original idea, my original genre, and gained me some success that now have allowed me to do that anyway. So I get to go, I get to, release an album with whatever I want on it. And I have a pretty good following now that I'll get some plays and I got a pretty good contact list where I can uh, get some playlist support. And uh, Justin and I have a pretty good idea now of what to do. So maybe we have a, a release strategy that's better than before. Yeah. So it, so, you know, I guess next steps are album. Justin and I are still collaborating. He has his own act now called HS. <laughs> Um, they are an incredible chill indie, uh, like chill indie duo that make incredible music. And and uh, him and I also have some collaborations on the belt. And I'm still collaborating with DJ producers in the house and EDM industry. I have three features that I'll be releasing next month, um, all of which these artists have massive uh, Spotify following. So it's really cool that people are still contact- contacting me wanting my voice on their songs and I get to still do music. Um, Lastly, I'll say the thing I forgot to mention this whole time is I've been gigging ever since doing the acoustic live performances at few wineries, lots of restaurants, lots of golf clubs, lots of private events, uh, that never went away. Um, I actually became a full-time musician uh, two two years ago and gigged, only gigged, and made a good income gigging and received royalties from my streams as well and make a living doing that. And i um, lucky enough that I get to do that. So the gigging, now that I'm moving to Oregon, will definitely slow down because the gigging circuit there is a lot smaller than Southern California. But that being said, so is the musician pool. Um, stepping back into that and what I've done so far, I will be welcomed with open arms to gig there uh, regularly once the quarantine ends. So that's, uh, that's kind of the story. <laughs> no, that's awesome. I love your story and it's, it's great. And I, I always thought it was, it's amazing because I agree with you. I, like there are people who are just purists, but I also believe that you just took you know like you had i i had i got the gold and you just it was just remixed and i just see it as 
you took your song, which you put your heart and soul into it, and then you put it through Google Translate for somebody else to under to digest it just a different way because that's just how they respond. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, I don't understand like how that that's a, a problem. Like the words that you wrote, the melody that that you wrote with with that is is the same, but let's just digest it completely different. You, you know, totally and, agree. And you know, and people responded to it, you know, totally different. And uh, but you're still able to do both things, so you know that's 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 just freaking awesome. I I really yeah. That. So I got to you know, and the next steps too is after I release the album. That's kind of more of a mixture of both. So I get to figure out a way to perform that live in such a way that I start to hone in on the vision. Really, mm -hmm. like I like been dabbling in so many areas. Yeah. And the good thing is, Justin said this, Justin Beer said this, that my voice is my voice. And regardless if it's on a blues acoustic neo soul track or whatever, or a tropical house song, it is my voice. Mm -hmm. And that's what my fans I'm finding out really want when I release a track and it's not tropical house or maybe if it's you know a ballad that i released um they still like it mm -hmm. and so it's really cool that i get to be adam knight because it's my voice not my not a genre that's necessarily even though so many people when i sing and, and i'm getting kind of which i like after the years people are are, are finding a way to explain me mm -hmm. and it's really uh they're calling me blues pop and so that's kind of where the ball has started to roll so my album i will say a lot of it is mid-tempo you know boom clap guitar riffs with some electronic production with me belting it so that's kind of where i've naturally just like moved my myself into gotcha. um is like this bluesy pop thing but yeah. But like I said, I'm still going to be doing as many features as are thrown my way to do these EDM tracks on the side as well. Absolutely. So no, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, you know, with this pandemic happening, like, you know, I see kind of like the way Napster changed the, you know, music industry, kind of like how Spotify changes the industry. Do you think there's a, you know, after this, you know, us, you know, we're talking live more often. We haven't really done that before. I've been doing this, I've been doing Zoom concerts for, for you know, people on my mailing list and, and everything like that. Do you see like a fundamental change in the music industry again? Or do you think it's just gonna be back, just back to normal? I see, mm, I definitely see a change. I definitely see this as an opportunity to utilize technology even more so. Now, that being said, I feel like after the quarantine ends, I feel like there's going to be a massive like boomerang effect where it's deep into technology right now, but all of a sudden people are going to be craving live music. Mm -hmm. Like, Give it like, you know, three months after the quarantine, people will be going out. So it's mm -hmm. like everybody's going to be booking. Everybody, every winery is going to throw a party. They're going to say it. End of quarantine, wine tasting event, you know, every wine to quarantine party. They're going to be looking for the, the musicians that can turn up and do the damn thing. So mm -hmm. I, I know the, the live people effect, like touch and hear and like see in person is going to be people are going to um, not take that for granted anymore. You know, anymore. It's really going to come back. I think that being said, we're so deep into technology. Like we're using this right now is that online concerts and like new ways of streaming. Like I saw Spotify put, if uh, musicians are affected by COVID Spotify, Spotify has a donate button. It's not in the United States yet, but I'm going to get it because most of my music is being played in Europe anyway. Um, my fans can donate to me directly through my Spotify. So it's like, and all of that money comes to me. Spotify doesn't take a dime. So it's really cool that 
the streaming platforms are deepening and changing. And I know S Spotify is really just paving this way of what to do during this time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you do uh, like Inst uh, Facebook live, but Facebook also has that, that option uh, as well. It's so, um, yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's kind of crazy. I was, I was arguing with my brother yesterday cause he was like, Oh, I'm going to get those massage guns. Like the massage gun. He's a, he's a bodybuilder. And, yeah. Um, pop, 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 pop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, and he was saying how um, he was like, "Oh, in fifty years' time, there's going to be no massage, you know, parlors or anything." I was like, "You've never gotten a massage before, right? Like, like there's nothing, nothing can beat like someone touching you and like just that ambiance and just the whole experience. Like, the experience is is why we go to to do certain things besides doing it, you know, instead of yeah. doing it ourselves. So, yeah, I'm also I'm I'm kind of torn because I do feel like. You, initially when everything comes back is going to be chaos i've been trying to get my ducks in a row and you know have my contact list and everything and i hope every musician is kind of doing this as well yes. but like getting totally prepared and like when this subsides that everybody kind of comes in and and um you know get you know contact the, the these venues and be like hey you know it's going to be crazy let's get this this the ball rolling yeah uh, but yeah, so uh, I'm 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 totally totally hear what you're saying, totally hear what you're saying. Yeah, I mean your brother, I mean you're not wrong. When the fact is like the in person effect will always be more, mm -hmm. and my worry is that I mean this is going down a whole other rabbit hole in like music, but my worry is that like AI artificial intelligence will get so advanced at some point, which I think it's bound to anyway, whether it's in our lifetime or whatever, um, that it will then take over. We won't, and, and, and it will be such, it'll be so advanced that it emulates, you know, that really well, like me massaging. So if we have like AI massage masseuses, but yet they, look and massage us exactly like the person yet we don't have to pay them you know you're, you're dang right that they would jump on that like that would be a thing and mm -hmm. i'm not saying it's a thing and i'm not i'm not trying to get all conspiracy on it but it's like i think there is this point i think to answer my question or the, the question about the industry changing yes dude it's totally changing how quick and how drastic is a thing that I can't answer, but it's like eventually things are going to get the ball is just rolling towards technology always advancing and musicians trying to keep up with like, you know, this is sound gear and like, okay, we're doing Facebook lives now. Okay. Now we're doing Facebook lives where we're, we're attaching our audio interface and our mic to it. So it's pro quality. Okay. Now we need to attach our thing on the screen to make it look this. So there's always going to be a next next thing to to add on yeah you it's, it's always something that to catch up on like are are you on tiktok at all i was i was i i need, I need to get back on tiktok i guess i i tried tiktok for a little bit i think i still have an account but it's just it's hard it's i feel like an old man on TikTok totally <laughs> if we're like i mean me and you are both 30 plus so it's like yeah. that's not like super cool to be on there like that's not our, yeah that's not our, but you kind of have to be on the 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 forefront of it otherwise you're going to get left by the time you get onto it and like you know the people who switch over from instagram to tiktok if that happens or whatever the same way facebook kind of you know you know people instagram. want to see instagram it's it's kind of like i you know you want to be ahead of the curve on the okay. same time i feel like i'm i was trying to record some stuff but i feel like i was catering to 13 14 15 year olds and like I'm my music is not for them. Yeah, no. Oh. Dude. It's like so it's, it's, it's super difficult. It's so difficult and like I I and I feel like sometimes I hear about things kind of late like I didn't even know about this Twitch thing. Mm -hmm. Until that, I don't even know what that is to be honest. So I So so Twitch is it's kind of like um uh, it's just live streaming but like you're watching people you know, play video games and you're, you're just, 
So I was thinking about, I wanted to do a TV show, like a, a Twitch account where I was doing like we're doing here, but mm -hmm. like, let's say you released your album, what we do, we'll play a video game, like we'll play 2K or something that you really like. And while we're doing it, we'll listen to your whole album. And then, oh, like, that's cool. But, yeah, and then we'll we'll talk about like what what started what inspired you to create that that song and and stuff like that and get into it, but play video games at the same time. But uh, that's I haven't gotten idea. into it, but like I think I think that'd be I think that'd be fun. I don't know how to set that up. If anybody's watching or anybody and knows how to set that up, let me know and we'll get that set up. But yeah, that's a that's a thing. That would be so cool because I know that you could definitely like stream the video and then attach the audio input. But then how do we, oh, yeah, because let's say I'm talking through an interface. I could plug in, you know, channel two, a, a tr you know, like put my music through that channel basically and play while I talk while the, this is a video is stream. There's definitely a possibility that we can do this. Yeah, that's we totally. can definitely make it work. But that's, I have so many, this Epidemic, like, you know, it's definitely a tragic thing, but like for me personally, it's just like it's so many opportunities kind of, you know, popped up. And like, I, it, it's kind of like I'm at the point where I'm just kind of trying to hone it in and be like, what is the most realistic um, thing? Um, I've been ignoring the people here at the, the, in the, the chat here. I'm sorry. Damn I'm it. <laughs> just, just, yeah. Hampus, uh, he just joined. Mm -hmm. He's a producer uh, and uh, um, songwriter as well that I work with. And he produced two of the songs so far that will be on my album, Say My Name and I Am Enough. And both those songs are bangers. Bangers. Awesome. So, uh, Hampus, shout out. You're badass, bro. Is there any better feeling than like you're in a studio and like you're listening to your own shit and it's such a banger and you're just like yes, <laughs> bro. There's nothing. There's nothing better. Like, have you been um, have you been watching um the the verses like the musicians kind of like going at it like playing their hits in in the live bro. stream? What's that? Bro. So they had like um Little John and T Pain. They're going at it, so they're just playing their the biggest hits, and like Neo and and um, Johnson Austin was was going at it, and like they, they were just playing their good stuff, and you could tell they're just like, I made a banger right now. Like it yeah, was like it, when you get the, the opportunity to just check out one of them, and it, it's it's just so good. And it's just called musician verses or verses. I don't it just I, you can even go on YouTube and kind of check it out, but like I, Lil John verse, yeah, 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 verse yeah. Okay. verse whatever, and yeah. But it's it's it was awesome, and I mean they were there recently. It was like Babyface versus Teddy Riley, but oh, like, I love Babyface. Yeah, Babyface is awesome, but like it kind of crashed and burned the first time. Teddy Riley was like messing everything up, <laughs> but oh, they had, like a rematch and everything. But it's it was still, I you know it wasn't what I thought it was gonna be, but it was still awesome. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Is, but there's nothing like having writing a song and you think it's it's the shit and you know you're just like especially in a studio it's like bumping loud and you're just super excited yes dude speaking of bangers there you were there when i wrote what was i thinking on stage uh with andrew mckenzie we're at jameson roaring donkey we were playing this it was an epic show. There, it was full. The house was full. There was probably like 100, yeah. 115 people there. Yeah. And Andrew McKenzie comes out with this riff. Boom, boom, boom. Na, 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 na. Can and I tell you something? Can I tell you something? We, um, me, Andrew McKenzie, and um, a bunch of other band members, we, um, we played at a winery. And then from there, we got booked to do a wedding. Uh -huh. And during the cocktail hour, we were just jamming out and we didn't know, you know, what to do. And we had, like, Andrew just brought out what was I thinking. <laughs> we were singing that for a couple of times. Like, we just said it, like, a couple of times because obviously no one knew what the, that song was. And I was just, I was laughing. So I had to give you credit. Uh, oh! 
<laughs> oh, dude, that makes me so mad. You had Dr- Muchal as your drummer. I know that Nick Muchal. Yeah, Nick Muchal, and um, we we had uh, Scott Foreman, and then we had uh, I have Jason Tharp uh, on on the bass. Oh, and yeah. Everybody, everybody's a monster. Everybody's a monster. It's it was crazy. Bay, that's what I'm saying. That's why I moved to the Bay. Is Bay Area musicians, dude? Oh, yeah. They're just monster musicians. Yeah. It, so I was super lucky. Anything I throw at them, they're like, what? Uh, all right, I got it. And then, they're like, like okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they just add that stroke of, of color to your sound, to your, you know, what you were looking for, like, and, and you know, just makes it so much better. So they're, they're yeah. great. I love them. I still play that song live with guitar. I'll do, or, I'll, or I'll bring my looper out and I'll loop that riff and then mm-hmm. I'll like add, you know, a bass line, a drum line to it. And mm-hmm. that song will be produced finally years later um the end of uh the end of this uh september i'm gonna start working on what was i thinking unfortunately it's not on the album but it's 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 coming finally years later yeah that's that's awesome that's really awesome yeah no i can't wait to hear it and i can't wait to hear your new 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 project bro It's, it's gonna be it's gonna be dope I'll send you after this. I'll send you a Google Drive of uh, of say my name. Hamp- if Hamp is still watching, I'm going to show Justin Brown. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Um, the first when I was talking, I don't know if Alex Fry's in here. She might have exited the conversation, but she actually gave you that. What is up, Adam? Justin bro? Brown. How you doing, man? Oh, dude, I'm doing so good. That's awesome. Can can you hear me just fine? I can hear you great, loud and clear. Really nice, uh, nice signal here. Okay, cool. Last time I did this, like the the volume on my end was was really low, so I was like, I gotta fix that. Cool. So. Justin Brown, <laughs> how you doing, man? Dude, it's been really good since I last seen you years ago. Yeah, it's been years. It seems like I'm I'm going by, man. Yeah, I'm really, really excited to uh, to be here, man. I was uh, trying to connect with you. I was gonna connect, try hit you up net last time I went to the Bay Area, but then I never ended up going. So it's it's been a it's been a minute. Yeah. How you how yeah. you like down there? Man, Southern California is a uh, is a beast with music, and it's quite the uh, it's quite the experience down here. It's it's a it's a dog eat dog world down here in the music. Uh, yeah, I can only imagine. Yeah, that's crazy. But the gigging is great. Lots of opportunity and lots of like-minded musicians who are goal-oriented and trying to do do the dang thing. And um, but I actually won't be down here much longer. No, where where are you headed? I'm moving moving back to Oregon after all these years. Really? Yeah, I'm moving to to Oregon to be near family and still do music. Obviously, uh, you know, that's- but. Yeah. That's awesome. No, I'm happy for you, man. I mean, you can make music anywhere, but like as long as you're around with people that you know that you know love and support you, like that's all that matters, you know. Totally, totally. I got a really nice studio set up too, so it's it's going to be nice to have more space, less rent, near family. Uh, it's it's a win-win in every avenue, other than just the accessibility to like really big gatherings of yeah. music, you know. But I can, I can work my way around that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So, Dude, well, tell me. Oh, go, no, go ahead. I, give me a quick update on you, man. It's been years since I've uh, since I've jumped in with Justin Brown. Man, I've been, I've been like, I kind of quadrupled down on the the winery scene, and uh, I was just all about it, and I just I just love it, you know, like I just kind of. I was sitting down just figuring out like what I want out of this like this music journey and everything and I was just like I just wanted to play at just the most beautiful places I can with like mm-hmm. you, you know the, the the coolest people and stuff and that's just what I've been setting out to do and yes uh, you know um last month my my EP kind of went out um I had a you know this the CD release at a winery and it was pretty nice but unfortunately with you know situations of like it, it got canceled <laughs> but 
you know, it was still good to, uh, you know, I still got a whole bunch of love and support and everything. So I, I can't complain at all. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, just and now I'm I'm doing, you know, concerts and um, I'm, I'm trying I'm doing, you know, things like these, this and like talking to people and uh, other creative people and seeing how they're, you, you know, they're holding it up in situations like this and, and, you know, everyone's kind of in the same boat and everyone's like more than happy to help and support each other. So it's, it's really cool. Yes. Oh, dude. So excited to hear that brother. Yeah. So excited. Yeah. You're in a great area for that. I mean, that's wine country. So yeah. Yeah. Up, up, up North here. I got tired of personally, at the one point I was like playing at bars and like the music that I kind of have is just, is too mellow, too quiet for kind of bars and no one was really paying attention. And I was just like, what am I doing? So kind of, I switched over to the, to the winery scene. So, yeah. Yeah. In Southern Oregon, they have uh, 30 new wineries that opened up in the last three years. So hey, Alex. Uh, Sorry, I'm it's really like a, Whoa, what's up, Alex? Alex Fry. Yeah, she, we were on there a couple weeks ago. We were talking, and it, we had an awesome discussion. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, yeah. welcome, fellow musicians coming in. Yeah. Yeah, I like this. So, yeah, brother. What, what's, uh, how do you want this to go? What's, what's the, what's our, you want to? Well, let's start with, um, let, let's go with the, you know, vintage Adam, Adam Knight. Like, how did you get started? Okay. Okay. We're right. gonna what's, what's your quick... What's your story? What's my story? Got it. Um, long story short. Oh, we gotta uh, have to take your time. No, no long story short. Okay, no long story short. Southern <laughs> Oregon, born and raised, country boy through and through, and yet uh, wanted to be soul R and B, like pop. Uh, blues singer uh my my environment though in southern oregon didn't necessarily uh influence and want to help my situation of wanting to be a singer it's it's such a it, it, it's an area that there's just not a lot of people that are successful in the music industry so there wasn't a lot of um folks to ask and talk to about this and really you know, question, hey, or how are you doing it? Or where are you gigging? There just wasn't a whole lot of that going on in Southern Oregon. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, fast forward years later until uh, I'm, a, you know, 23, 24, I'm 31 now. So 20, 20, 23, uh, 22, I moved to California and start my journey in the Bay Area uh, of just kind of doing some self growth work, doing a nature connection program called weaving earth. And just through all of that, I really committed to being a singer because my whole childhood, I wanted to be a singer. I, I sang, I was in choir. I got a guitar when I was 12 and wrote songs, performed at the talent shows. And yet I still didn't feel like I was doing anything uh, if I was staying in that area, I needed to, to go where other musicians were mm -hmm. and and we, musicians that were doing it and really trying. And so the Bay Area is an amazing place for that. As you know, you live in the Bay and North Bay and um, found myself in this program surrounded by other musicians and surrounded by people doing really good work and doing um, coaching work and just a lot of entrepreneurial folk and uh, it really, um, it really helped me make the decision that I wanted to be a full-time musician mm -hmm. and I could do this. And so I created the stage name Adam Knight. Uh, it's, it, it, it really helped me commit to that, you know, by claiming myself as Adam Knight and telling people I'm Adam Knight and this is why I'm Adam Knight. And um, it almost forced me into that decision after I let the ball roll for a little while. Mm -hmm. And with that, I was super lucky to meet a select few musicians. Uh, John Foray being one of them. Um, Andrew McKenzie. Uh, Justin Brown. And 
uh, a select few musicians that helped me gig and helped me become a front man, helped me be a performer. And what does it mean to play live with just your guitar? What does it mean to play live with six people in a band? What does it mean to record in a studio? And what does that look like? And uh, wow, the process of producing a song from point A to point B. So I was really lucky to be mentored and guided and uh, taken um, along the ride with these other musicians that helped me uh, do it and start my own path. Mm -hmm. So through the Bay Area, through those connections of playing live, meeting you, gigging with you, because I gig with you quite a bit, um, we had some fun times, and gigging with other musicians, I learned what I liked and what I didn't like. I learned what I really wanted to do, and I met Justin Buer, who is actually somebody that I grew up with, somebody that uh, also is from Southern Oregon and went on his own journey. <laughs> side side story there. He's actually the one who walked by there a second ago. Um, <laughs> Justin and I reconnected after years, and he is a producer. So a whole other way to meet someone in the music industry. I was really in the live scene. I was getting my live chops, getting the funk and soul, getting the band, getting the gigging at the bars and doing a couple of the winery circuits and uh, really just grinding the live scene. Boom, boom, room in San Francisco, just enjoying what it meant to play live, but I didn't have any content. I didn't have anything online. I was just posting on an Adam Knight page, and I was just saying, like, oh, the music's coming. It's coming someday. And I was trying my best to do it with John Foray. I was trying my best to record with no budget. This man was so kind to just, like, on his free time to record some of my content. And yet Justin comes in, opens up a whole new side of things for me mm -hmm. uh, to singer, songwriter and producer coming together to create content at the same time, start from scratch and record. And we co-wrote the song, I've Got the Gold, at his house in Healdsburg, California. And... Um, that opened up a whole avenue of him learning production at the same time. He, he was already a, a talented producer and already a techie guy, but yet mm -hmm. he, he was still brand new to it. Just like me, we were, we were starting from scratch together. Wait, what's Spotify and how do you upload stuff and what's distribution mean? And wow, you got to get publishing on your songs. How do we do that? So lots of Googling, lots of asking friends, lots of just getting into uh, education mode of like, what does it mean to release a song? Mm -hmm. Not just record it, but release the damn thing. Mm -hmm. And and try to do it successfully. So thank God I had Justin, because he really is like, left brain, like, let's let's learn. So he really learned and read all the forums and all the little things on how do you release and the, the little strategies and Oh, wow, we can pay a little money to get on this playlist and little things like that. So after we released Walking Backwards, my first single, and then I've Got the Gold, the original I've Got the Gold version was on a SoundCloud playlist that Justin actually paid $30 to get on. It's called uh, Ox London, and it's actually a pretty big playlist. And uh, But it's SoundCloud, and SoundCloud is, you know, it's it has its opinions, and it has its ways that, its use, um, it's coming back up in the world, but yet at that time, SoundCloud was kind of looked down upon to a mm -hmm. lot of, so, but it's still very useful. I'm so grateful for SoundCloud. And anyway, Justin puts it on a playlist and this producer, a uh, DJ named Shobi, finds the song. And he says, hey guys, love the track. Uh, I do house, chill house, deep house. I want to remix that. And we're like, uh, sure, why not? Like, what's that look like? What do we do? And he's like, oh, you just give me, send me the stems and I'll, I'll do my thing. And then we'll release it under I've Got the Gold Shobi Remix. And it'll still show up on your profile, show up on mine. It'll be a collaboration. So we're like, uh, okay, why not? So we do it. And we didn't know that Shobi had some really cool connections. The guy had quite a bit of connections in the industry. And 
after him producing the song, he released it uh, under a label, under with our consent. We all agreed to this um, under a label called Casual Jam Records out of London, mm. and a pretty good size label. Mr. Revels Casual Jam Records is a is also a YouTube channel with like four million subscribers. It's a, a quite a big thing happening over there in the electronic dance music scene, mm -hmm. and that is how I birthed my way into the EDM scene when when I did that when Shelby remix and after that I've got the gold was remixed three more times and all of those remixes were, were signed to the label as well the same one and uh the all those remixes combined and the original have over 30 million streams now and uh that paved a, a massive way for my voice to be in the industry and now i get contacted by djs every week producers every week if not a few times uh, a month to sing on an instrumental that they created or create a track together from scratch and so when that happened justin and i kept making music together but all of a sudden i had three or four other guys that i'm collaborating with mm -hmm. And Justin then and me made a plan for me to buy my own recording gear because Justin was my was my studio at that time. He was my, not only the producer, not only my 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 collaborator, but he was the studio. He had the gear. So um, I purchased and invested in really high quality microphones and interfaces and computer and, and cables. And all of a sudden I obtained like twelve to fifteen thousand dollars worth of sound gear on credit. Mm -hmm. and um, started recording vocals for other producers and then started to release them. And that kept paving a way deeper and deeper into the EDM industry and a little farther away from the soul funk industry and a little farther away from the, the you know, acoustic vibe that I had and was hard leaning into the EDM industry. So fast forward about two years of doing that and acquiring, you know, up to let's say like 35 million streams now total i now am wanting to go back i'm so my album that's going to be coming out this summer it's a 13 to 15 song album it's going to be a good a substantial size mm -hmm. um has a mixture it has gritty blues boom clap pop feel it's got an acoustic it's got a couple ballads. It's got like a weird, like a cool, chill EDM track on it. Mm -hmm. um, it's got a little bit of everything, and I'm really glad I'm doing it this way because it's it's all of me. It's all of what I've been uh, working towards, and um, so many people, so many people are purists when it comes to the music industry, which I highly respect. There's a way that people can commit to something, a sound, and they do it, no matter the opportunities that come. I, on the other hand, said yes to some opportunities that steered me away from my original idea, my original genre, and gained me some success that now have allowed me to do that anyway. So I get to, go, I get to release an album with whatever I want on it, and I have a pretty good following now that I'll get some plays and I got a pretty good contact list where I can uh, get some playlist support. And uh, Justin and I have a pretty good idea now of what to do. So maybe we have a, a release strategy that's better than before. Yeah. So it, so, you know, I guess next steps are album. Justin and I are still collaborating. He has his own act now called HS. Um, they are an incredible chill indie, uh, chill indie duo that make incredible music and and uh him and i also have some collaborations on the belt and i'm still collaborating with dj producers in the house and edm industry i have three features that i'll be releasing next month um all of which these artists have massive uh spotify following so it's really cool that people are still contact contacting me wanting my voice on their songs and i get to still do music um, lastly, I'll say the thing I forgot to mention this whole time is 
I've been gigging ever since doing the acoustic live performances at few wineries, lots of restaurants, lots of golf clubs, lots of private events. Uh, that never went away. Um, I actually became a full-time musician uh, two, two years ago and gigged, only gigged and made a good income gigging and received royalties from my streams as well and make a living doing that. And I'm lucky enough that I get to do that. So the gigging, now that I'm moving to Oregon, will definitely slow down because the gigging circuit there is a lot smaller than Southern California. But that being said, so is the musician pool. Um, stepping back into that and what I've done so far, I will be welcomed with open arms to gig there uh, regularly once the quarantine ends. So that's, uh, that's kind of the story. <laughs> no, that's awesome. I love your story and it's, it's great. And I, I always thought it was, it's amazing because I agree with you. I like, there are people who are just purists, but I also believe that you just took you know, like you had, I, I had, I got the gold and you just, it was just remixed. And I just see it as you took your song, which you put your heart and soul into it. And then you put it through Google translate for somebody else to under, to digest it just a different way, because that's just how they respond. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, I don't understand like how that that's a, a problem. Like the words that you wrote, the melody that, that you wrote with, with that is, is the same, but let's just digest it completely different. You, you know, totally and, agree. and, you know, and people responded to it, you know, totally different. And, uh, but you're still able to do both things. So, you know, that's, that's, that's just freaking awesome. I, I really, yeah. So I got to, you know, and the next steps too, is after I released the album, that's kind of more of a mixture of both. So I get to figure out a way to perform that live in such a way that I start to, hone in on the vision really mm -hmm. like i like been dabbling in so many areas yeah. and the good thing is justin said this justin beer said this that my voice is my voice and regardless if it's on a blues acoustic neo soul track or whatever or a tropical house song it is my voice Ooh. and that's what my fans I'm finding out really want when I release a track and it's not tropical house, or maybe if it's, you know, a ballad that I released, um, they still like it. Mm -hmm. And so it's really cool that I get to be out of night because it's my voice, not my, not a genre that's necessarily, even though so many people when I sing and, and I'm getting kind of, which I like after the years, people are, are, are finding a way to explain me. Mm -hmm. And it's really, uh, they're calling me blues pop. And so that's kind of where the ball has started to roll. So my album, I will say a lot of it is mid-tempo, you know, boom clap guitar riffs with some electronic production with me belting it. So that's, kind of where i've naturally just like moved my myself into gotcha. um it's like this bluesy pop thing but, yeah. but like i said i'm still gonna be doing as many features as are thrown my way to do these edm tracks on the side as well absolutely so no, absolutely absolutely now you know with this pandemic happening like you know i see kind of like the way Napster changed the you know music industry, kind of like how Spotify changes the industry. Do you think there's a you know after this you know us you know we're talking live more often. We haven't really done that before. I've been doing this. I've been doing Zoom concerts for for you know people on my mailing list and, and everything like that. Do you see like a fundamental change in the music industry again, or do you think it's just going to be back just back to normal? I see, mm, I definitely see a change. I definitely see this as an opportunity to utilize technology even more so. Now, that being said, I feel like after the quarantine ends, I feel like there's going to be a massive 
like boomerang effect where it's deep into technology right now, but all of a sudden people are going to be craving live music. Mm -hmm. Like give it like, you know, three months after the quarantine, people will be going out. So it's mm -hmm. like, everybody's going to be booking everybody. Every winery is going to throw a party. They're going to say it. End of quarantine, wine tasting event, you know, every wine to quarantine party, they're going to be looking for the, the musicians that can turn up and do the damn thing. So mm -hmm. I, I know, the, the live people effect like touch and hear and like see in person is going to be people are going to um, not take that for granted anymore. You know, anymore, it's really going to come back. I think that being said, we're so deep into technology. Like we're using this right now is that online concerts and like new ways of streaming. Like I saw Spotify put if uh, musicians are affected by COVID Spotify, Spotify has a donate button. It's not in the United States yet, but I'm going to get it because most of my music is being played in Europe anyway. Um, that my fans can donate to me directly through my Spotify. So it's like, and all of that money comes to me. Spotify doesn't take a dime. So it's really cool that the streaming platforms are deepening and changing. And I know Spotify is really just paving this way of what to do during this time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you do uh, like Insta uh, Facebook live, but Facebook also has that, that option uh, as well. It's so, um, yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's kind of crazy. I was, I was arguing with my brother yesterday cause he was like, Oh, I'm going to get those massage guns. Like the massage gun. He's a, he's a bodybuilder. Yeah. Yeah. The, and he was saying how um, he was like, oh, in 50 years times, there's going to be no massage, you know, parlors or anything. I was like, you've never gotten a massage before. Right. Like like there's nothing nothing can beat like someone touching you and like just that audience and just the whole experience. Like the experience is is why we go to to do certain things besides doing it, you know, instead of yes. doing it ourselves. So, yeah, I'm also I'm, I'm kind of torn because I do feel like you initially when everything comes back is going to be chaos i've been trying to get my ducks in a row and you know have my contact list and everything and i hope every musician's kind of doing this as well yes. but like getting totally prepared and like when this subsides that everybody kind of comes in and and um you know get you know contact the, the these venues and be like hey you know it's going to be crazy let's get this this the ball rolling yeah um, but yeah, so uh, I'm 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 totally totally hear what you're saying, totally hear what you're saying. Yeah, I mean your brother, I mean you're not wrong. In, in the fact is like the in person effect will always be more, mm -hmm. and my worry is that I mean this is going down a whole other rabbit hole in like music, but my worry is that like AI artificial intelligence will get so advanced at some point, which I think it's bound to anyway, whether it's in our lifetime or whatever, um, that it will then take over. We won't, and, and, and it will be such, it'll be so advanced that it emulates, you know, that really well, like me massaging. So if we have like AI massage masseuses, but yet they, look and massage us exactly like the person yet we don't have to pay them you know you're, you're dang right that they would jump on that like that would be a thing and mm -hmm. i'm not saying it's a thing and i'm not i'm not trying to get all conspiracy on it but it's like i think there is this point i think to answer my question or the, the question about the industry changing yes dude it's totally changing how quick and how drastic is a thing that I can't answer, but it's like eventually things are going to get, the ball is just rolling towards technology always advancing and musicians trying to keep up with like, you know, this is sound gear and like, okay, we're doing Facebook lives now. Okay. Now we're doing Facebook lives. We're, we're attaching our audio interface and our mic to it. So it's pro quality. Okay. Now we need to attach our thing on the screen to make it look this. So there's always going to be a next, next thing to to add on yeah you it's, it's always something that to catch up on like are are you on tiktok at all i was i was i, I mean 
I need to get back on TikTok, I guess. I I tried TikTok for a little bit. I think I still have an account, but it's just it's hard. It's, I feel like an old man. On TikTok. Totally. <laughs> if we're like, I mean, me and you are both thirty plus, so it's like, yeah. that's not like super cool to be on there. Like that's not plus. our yeah, that's not our. But you kind of have to be on the 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 forefront of it. Otherwise, you're gonna get left. By the time you get onto it, and like you know, the people who switch over from Instagram to TikTok, if that happens or whatever, the same way Facebook kind of, you know, you know, people want to see Instagram. It's, it's kind of like, I, you know, you want to be ahead of the curve on the okay. same time. I feel like I'm, I was trying to record some stuff, but I feel like I was catering to 13, 14, 15 year olds. And like, I'm, my music is not for them. Yeah, no. Oh. It's like, so it's, it's, it's super difficult. It's so difficult. And like, I, I, and I feel like sometimes I hear about things kind of late. Like I didn't even know about this Twitch thing mm -hmm. until that, I don't even know what that is, to be honest. So I, so, so Twitch is, it's kind of like, um, it's just live streaming, but like you're watching people, you know, play video games and you're, you're just, so I was thinking about, I wanted to do a TV show, like a, a Twitch account where I was doing like we're doing here but mm -hmm. like let's say you release your album what we do we'll play a video game like we'll play 2k or something that you really like and while we're doing it we'll listen to your whole album and then, oh like, that's cool but, yeah and then we'll we'll talk about like what what started what inspired you to create that that song and and stuff like that and get into it but play video games at the same time but uh that's I haven't gotten into it, but like I think I think that'd be I think that'd be fun. I don't know how to set that up. If anybody's watching or anybody and knows how to set that up, let me know and we'll get that set up. But yeah, that's a that's a thing. That would be so cool because I know that you could definitely like stream the video and then attach the audio input. But then, how do we? Oh yeah, because let's say I'm talking through an interface. I could plug in, you know, channel two, a. A tr you know, like put my music through that channel basically and play while I talk while the, this is a video is stream. And there's definitely a possibility that we can do this. Yeah, it's we totally can definitely make it work. But that's, I have so many, this epidemic, like, uh, you know, it's definitely a tragic thing. But like for me personally, it's just like it's so many opportunities kind of, Oh, you know, popped up and like, I, it, it's kind of like, I'm at the point where I'm just kind of trying to hone it in and be like, what is the most realistic um, thing? Um, I've been ignoring the people here in the, in the, the chat here. I'm Damn sorry. Damn it. Like... <laughs> just, just, yeah. Hampus, uh, he just joined. Mm -hmm. He's a producer uh, and uh, um songwriter as well that i work with and he produced two of the songs so far that'll be on my album say my name and i am enough and both those songs are bangers bangers so uh hampus shout out your badass bro is there any better feeling than like you're in a studio and like you're listening to your own shit and it's such a banger and you're just like yeah <laughs> bro, there's nothing there's nothing better. Like, have you been, um, have you been watching, um, the, the verses, like the musicians kind of like going at it, like playing their hits in, in the live oh. stream? Stuff? What's that? Oh. So they had like, um, Little John and T Pain, they're going at it. So they're just playing their, the biggest hits and like Neo and, and, um, John Austin was, was going at it. And like, they, they were just playing their good stuff. And you could tell they're just like, I made a banger right now. Like it yeah, was like, it, when you get the opportunity to just check out one of them and it, it's, it's just so good. And it's just called musician versus or versus. I don't just, you can even go on YouTube and kind of check it out, but like little John verse. Yeah. 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 First, yeah. okay. first, whatever. And yeah, but it's, it's, it was awesome. And I mean, there were there recently it was like baby face versus Teddy Riley, but Ooh, like, I love but, baby face. Yeah, Babyface is awesome, but like it kind of crashed and burned the first time. Teddy Riley was like messing everything up, <laughs> but oh they had, like a rematch and everything. But it's it was still, I you know it wasn't what I thought it was gonna be, but it was still awesome. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. 
is but there's nothing like having writing a song and you think it's it's the shit and you know you're just like especially in a studio it's like bumping loud and you're just super excited yes dude speaking of bangers there you were there when i wrote what was i thinking on stage uh with andrew mckenzie we're at jameson roaring donkey we were playing this it was an epic show. There, it was full. The house was full. There's probably like 100, yeah. 115 people there. Yeah. And Andrew McKenzie comes out with this riff. Bow, bow, bow. Na, 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 na. Can and I tell you something? Can I tell you something? We, um, me, Andrew McKenzie, and um, a bunch of other band members, we, um, we played at a winery. And then from there, we got booked to do a wedding. Uh -huh. And during the cocktail hour, we were just jamming out and we didn't know, you know, what to do. And we had, like, Andrew just brought out what was I thinking. <laughs> we were singing that for a couple of times. Like, we just said it, like, a couple of times because obviously no one knew what the, that song was. And, and I was just, I was laughing. And so I had to give you credit. On, oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, that makes me so mad. You had Dr Muchow as your drummer. I know that. Nick Muchow. Yeah, Nick Muchow. And um, we, we had uh, Scott Foreman. And then we had, uh, I have Jason Tharp uh, on, on the bass. Oh, and yeah. Everybody, everybody's a monster. Everybody's a monster. It's it was crazy. Bay, that's what I'm saying. That's why I moved to the Bay. Is Bay Area musicians, dude? Oh, yeah, they're just monster musicians. Yeah, it, so it's super funny. lucky. Anything I throw at them, they're like, "What? Uh, all right, I got it." And then they're like, like "Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, cool, yeah, yeah." Yeah, and they just add that stroke of of color to your sound, to your you know what you were looking for, like, and, and you know just makes it so much better. So. They're they're yeah. great. I love. Them. I still play that song live with guitar. I'll do or I'll, or I'll bring my looper out and I'll loop that riff and then mm -hmm. I'll like add you know a bass line a drum line to it and mm -hmm. that song will be produced finally years later. Um, the end of uh, the end of this uh, September. I'm gonna start working on what was I thinking. Unfortunately, it's not on the album, but it's 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 coming finally years okay. later. Yeah, that's that's awesome. That's really awesome. Yeah, no, yeah. I can't wait to hear it, and I can't wait to hear your new 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 project, bro. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be dope. Yeah, I'll send you after this. I'll send you a Google Drive of uh of say my name. Hamp if Hampus is still watching, I'm gonna show Justin Brown. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Um, the first. When I was talking, I don't know if Alex Fry is in here. She might have exited the conversation, but she actually gave me the idea of, like, I want to do a first song challenge. And um, so, like, you you go back and you listen to your first song, you record it, and you you play it. And, uh, and just to kind of see, like, um, just to see the progress you've made from then till, till now. And even if you can remix it to make it better or whatever, but I would love to hear like everybody's like very first song that, that they wrote. Oh, totally. Yeah. I could show. Yeah. I mean, walking backwards was the first song I ever released. Mm -hmm. And when Justin beer and I go and listen to that, we're like, damn dude, that mixing mixing needs some help. And yeah. <laughs> like we're like that vocal the way i sang it like things like that but that's the beauty of growth that's the beauty of it and then yeah also the first song that justin and i actually produced together but never released it just it just kind of sat in google drive for years we actually mm -hmm. revisited and it's gonna be on the album so it's really that's cool awesome. it's, yeah. it's like and it sounds way different because he has all these skills he opened up the project on ableton and he's like looking at it and he's like Man, I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I did this thing. Why did I EQ with this thing this way? And oh my yeah, god, you like fixed it and uh, how to improve it. And it's awesome. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. That's what I want people to do because I want them to go back and be like, oh man, like, and just be happy about like the progress that they made. Because I feel like a lot of people kind of forget like how far they they've they've come because they they're just constantly just looking at the end goal. Totally, totally, totally. Ham Pulsin Strum, Mr. J Brown Music. What is your expertise? expertise oh are you talking about my my drink here no no, no. hampus wants to know what do you do like what do you oh what do i do i'm a i'm a musician i'm a um musician also um i play acoustic guitar i'm learning uh the mandolin right now um just I just added some stuff and um i wrote a song hard 
Yeah, I, I mean, I wrote a song on my EP called um, I Saw the Day. And it was, I just had a mandolin and I was just fooling around. I have no clue what the chords were or anything. And I just made a melody and it was just kind of nice and exciting. And it was just kind of like a new journey. But um, I'm kind of like, um, I guess I would say more of a luxury kind of musician. Like I try to stay um, away from, like I'm trying to like build my club and like I try to host events at wineries and, and um, really nice places and make sure where there's food and wine and everyone's having a good time and, and stuff. And that's just yes. kind of my angle. And um, kind of like you with your name, like my suit, I usually, every single time that I, I play out, 95%, we'll say 95% of the time to play, I wear a suit. And um, the reason why is because the first time I played at a winery, they didn't tell me what it was. And it was a black tie event. And um, I was in like a t-shirt and, and slacks because they didn't tell me what it was. And they were like, oh, don't worry about it because they didn't tell me. They're like, they just play. But the whole time I felt like so small. And so like, like I don't belong kind of here. And I was like, never again will I ever have that feeling. Like mm. I would rather be the best dressed person in the room than to be the yes. worst in, in the room so like my suit ended up being like like kind of like my superpower like my 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 super outfit and like yeah I yeah yeah a whole different person um you know doing that and so that's why you know i always wear a suit and like i i try to dress to to the nines when, when i'm performing oh man justin brown it's funny i i've always actually perceived you that way too like you always branded yourself according to having your persona clean cut gentlemen like dressed to the nines. So every time you and I gig together, every time we I saw you, you had your hat. But if you didn't have your hat, you had a super nice shirt on or a tie. Now you're doing the whole suit like ton. Like it's yeah, it's a persona. It's a thing. And that I highly respect because it makes people, it makes easier for branding. It makes easier for, for your fans to find you, to attach to it, you know, to like people to like, if they don't like you, great, go like that person over there. But this is what I do. This is, and you know, I see you I'm yeah. sorry. I was reading the comment. He was like, yeah, that was cool though. But yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the heads up on the dress attire not cool <laughs> yeah <laughs> it wasn't cool for them i was like what the hell so yeah I, this is the first time i've ever seen justin brown in a sweatshirt just see so all this know. is like yeah like i'm in like i'm in bum ass kind of i'm still <laughs> this came by wife but like this is the most dressed out like when i'm home i'm dressed out but like when i'm out like i'm yeah i try to turn up thing, as much thing. as possible yeah. my thing my thing that people are really getting to know me that i wear is I kind of wear more of like a country or like, like if you've watched the star is born, like I dress mm -hmm. like, I dress like Bradley Cooper. I wear a denim jacket and the same kind of hat. And that's what is, it's funny because when I first met you, I first met you at donkey and goat. Yeah. And, um, you, uh, I, I did my set and then you were like, Oh, I'm going to do my thing. And then I was like, all right, cool. And, like, you know, because I, I love, you know, open mics and everything. And I was expecting, when I first saw you, I was expecting country, like, or... Folk. Yeah. And then you broke out R&B, and I was like, what the hell? Like, yeah. <laughs> like, Dude. I was not expected that at all. I was the host of that open mic, remember? Yeah, so you were hosting it around there. Yeah, and I was just like... And you were a little cocky, too, I remember I it. Because you were like... You're like, oh, you're really good. Like, I want you to check me out. Like, you, like, you're just kind of like, yeah, I'm gonna be good. Like, just check me out. Yeah, yeah. You're like, I was like, all right, shit, all right. <laughs> well, because you came on strong, like you, you rocked it. You, everybody, Justin Brown. The first time I met him at this open mic, the dude, it's his time to go. He doesn't walk up to the stage. He stands on top of a chair and gets everybody singing along to the song acoustic when there's like probably 30, maybe like 40 people in this, the whole bar and works his way up to the stage slowly as he's playing this, the guitar. And I just thought that was gangster. I've never, ever seen someone do that at an open mic, let alone at a show. So I was just like, 
got to talk to this guy. So I, that basically, I will say thanks, Justin Brown, because that made me go like, now I got to bring it. Like, like now I got to bring it. So it was really good, like, competition. It wasn't competition, like, better. You know, it was just like, wow, this guy. No, it was like a, it was like a little rivalry kind of whatever. Yeah. And then I had to talk to this guy. I was like, I had to talk to this guy. So I'm talking. Obviously, I was feeling a little cocky. And also, I was like, damn, this guy's good. I got to, like, I got to, like, show up. And Justin Brown and I ended up playing, like, probably 10 other shows together. So it was, it was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. You just never know how that, that stuff goes. And it, it's funny, too, because I was at the point where I was kind of done with open mics. To, to be honest, like, yeah. I was kind of like, oh, I was there to, um, you know, obviously the open mics is to, to start, you know, to build up your chops and, and everything and work on things that you haven't worked on. But it was kind of like, it was getting to the point where like, why am I here? You know, and, and I'm not saying it's like open mics are super important and, and people every once in a while, you know, you know, people should go and just kind of su support, support them. But it comes to the time and you're like, all right, now you got to take it to the next level and, and focus, just focus on on this. So I was oh, kind of yeah. there, but I was lucky that I was happy that I, that I went there because, you know, I met you and we had a bunch of gigs and stuff like that. So, yeah, 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 man, I thinking back on that i'm really glad that that happened because i also just totally agree there's a time where you got to take the next step because i was like the host of that open mic and being the host you can kind of feel like you you become known as the open mic host mm -hmm. like that's and luckily I, I i only did it probably i think for like two months i only did like probably like like seven open mics or something but it was it was not my jam it wasn't, I'm super glad I was in and out and just learned. It did teach me about live sound in a good way. Cause I'd like EQ you like on the fly and like get everything set up and yeah, like, so it did, it did help me respect that more, but yeah, there's a time to take step off the comfort zone and break free and go to the next step. Yeah. It was, <laughs> I've, yeah. I mean, I've learned, you know, what's interesting I've learned more on open mics nights, like what yeah. not to do versus what to do. You know what, what I mean? Totally. Like you, you see like, you know, cause people are trying things and like, you just get that, that sometimes that uh, eerie feeling and you're like, Ooh, yeah, I'm not going to do that. Cause maybe like you had that in your repertoire. I was like, maybe I'll try this. And it just didn't work out. And I was like, ah, oh, no. oh my gosh. You really find out, re it's good. yeah, open mic's really good for reading the audience. It's really yeah. good like, okay, I'm going to pull out, I'm going to pull out this one I think is going to bring the house down. And a lot of the time, like, yeah, those songs do good. And sometimes it's like crickets. And then you bring out, like, this other one, and you do, like, a pretty good job, and it, like, brings the house down. And you're like. That's a, it's like, you, you never know what it is. Like, the, so what, is there a song that you've, written or something that is like personal to you i asked this with the, the my last my, my last guy too but is there a song that you've written um that you thought like this is gonna be a hit and then like no one kind of got it or re reverse was there a song that like you wrote that you're like oh it's all right you know and then just became like the biggest thing i or big expected i should say yeah, yeah. I think, I think, hmm, I'll use the one, I'll use the song that I think wasn't going to do anything mm. and happens to just like be an epic song that people love every time. And it's shock, it's shocking to me. And it's also not shocking to me, but it's, it's a song called Into the Dark and it's a ballad. Mm. And, so I don't play it a lot, you know, like it, like you play too many ballads and certain containers. It's like, you know, depending on the container, depending on where you're playing. But if I'm playing like a lot of restaurants and I play like 10 ballads in a row, they're going to like tell me to turn it up a little bit. Yeah. And so I don't usually play the song into the dark. It's so down tempo. It's like three, four timing, really slow, really like kind of sad, but like empowering too, if you really listen mm -hmm. and, for some reason, the authenticity of the song, something about the song gets people in. 
And I also have had another experience with that with a song I've written called You Make a Home. I've actually performed that at gigs that you and I used to do a long time ago. And it just works every time. And um, I don't know what that is. I, I haven't released either of those songs. I'm actually working on those songs for the September release. And, you know, and I will say, what was I thinking? Did good when it was with the band. But generally when I play it, it does okay. But it's definitely, it doesn't do as good as, as Into the Dark. It doesn't do as good as You Make a Home. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just like a party song that people, yeah, it, it really has to be played in a certain context, I've noticed. Yeah. Um, Into the Dark can kind of work almost anywhere. Yeah. It just surprised me. Yeah, no, you, like, again, you just never know. And you're just like, you look at it, the reactions and it's just kind of like, all right. We're, we're going we're doing this all right we'll do it you like that you want more <laughs> of that like you wait you want another ballad like that like you want that and they're like wow like that's so deep and like where is can i find that and i'm like oh it's not released yet they're like oh but i'll send you the google drive link i'll give you the song and they're like oh my god and then i like, send it to them and they're like crying and it's this thing and oh, they don't man. they don't remember what was i thinking like like some places do but there has to be an environment for it like yeah, basically got, like the night that you and I wrote it or sorry, the night that I wrote it, that you were there, yeah. it, it was a party and, and mm -hmm. we were like, what was I thinking? And people were responding to us. It was a thing. Yeah. It was organic. You know what I mean? It was, it was what the vibe was. So like, yeah, the only way you can make it, it will be popping is if you created that same vibe uh, uh, again, you know, exactly. I totally, totally get it. Totally yeah. Into get the it. dark, the ballad, like people they're drawn into that vibe. It's like a vibe of its own that people then choose to be like partake in. And when they do, they feel it. And they're like, Oh, what? Oh my God, I get it. Like, Oh, I just broke up with thing and the thing. And, and it's like really easy to kind of like dive into. I, maybe that's why sad songs like ballads, you know, if they're done well, they're always kind of a thing. Like people always kind of want, Oh yeah, there will always be yeah. a market because there's always sadness in 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 life. You know <laughs> what I mean? there's, there's, that's just always what it's gonna be. I remember yeah. I played at a winery one time, and this one lady came up and she was like, "Yeah, I just had to put my dog down like literally yesterday," and we were uh, yeah. like, "She was told me the song that I played. I was playing a cover. I don't remember what song it was." She was like, "But that was the song that she was listening to. Like, like that was the last song they did. It was just." And I was just like, I had to play the next song. I was like trying not to cry myself because I was just like, oh my God. Like it was just, but like the fact that I like helped touch her and she just saw it as a way, like, a, you know, as, as a sign of, of closure, it was just kind of like, and being a part of that, it's just kind of, it was just, it was just amazing. Just amazing. Totally. Yeah. Dude, and Hampus said, he's like, there's so much I haven't heard. I'm like, bro, I, I'll, I'll, I gotta show you these songs is because there's, okay. So there's like, songs i like i really put in different categories in my own like my adam knight way that i think of my own music mm -hmm. i like have like obviously ways that i categorize i have like edm i've got like the, the like blues pop stuff which is like my primary stuff right now and yeah. then like edm stuff's there too obviously and then i have like these ballads that just sit because I'm like almost hoarding them. Like I need them to be done a certain way. And like, yeah. it, you know, you make a home is a crazy special song to me because like, I don't know if she's over there, but like Larissa, my partner, you know, it's our song. It's about mm -hmm. us. And yeah. it's like, ah, oh, I just can't, I, I just, it's gotta be done a certain way. It's just, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. so I'm kind of hoarding these songs because I don't know how to like, I don't know yeah. who or, you know, it's just like, it, it needs, it's a, it needs. It's a whole other level of personal that's just for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, like it has to be, I get it. Like you, you have to do it that way. And you know, and that's what it is. And yet when I play them live, people are like, where are these? Why are they not released? <laughs> and so then I'm like, maybe I just need to like record a fucking acoustic on the thing. I don't, so I'm in this like, Love, hate, even, place right now. Yeah, even switch it up, do it like a live kind of thing. You know what I mean? A live album. Yeah, yeah. or like a live EP or something, or a live, 
or like have exclusive things on SoundCloud for just all my acoustic shit or something. I don't know. But that's what I just re- like last month I released my EP and then this week I released an acoustic version of all those songs. Just yeah. on just because the like acoustic and like with the band is just completely different. It's a completely different different vibe and certain oh. like you like same thing with the EDM and the music. Like some people respond better with just acoustic and getting the message, and some people just want to listen to the feel and the beat. And, and yeah, yeah, they're like get into just, it. Yeah, yeah, and just kind of get into it that way. So it's just like you're just trying to feed both avenues. Yeah, you're like and not forget it. Yeah, so it's there. There was a time where I completely like shut off recording any sort of acoustic stuff, and I was just playing it live and then doing the EDM thing. And now it's like. I'm really like opening up the floodgates to everything. So I have like on schedule on my calendar, like, okay, I need to record into the dark by this day. You make a home is like, that's the beast of the beasts of all my songs. And I know like I'm talking it up, but it just, before we go super big experience that happened in September of last year. So you make a home was a song I wrote years ago before I even met Larissa. And it's funny how you write songs and then they make sense later yeah so now the song completely makes sense it's her and i it's like the thing now her and i perform it together it's like a duo Mm -hmm. and so now it's become our song it's like our thing and so september i was playing the show in oregon long story short i'm playing the show everybody in the audience knows but me that larissa flew in to surprise me she's backstage i have no idea I start playing You Make a Home. I have this whole speech I planned before the song that she's not here to sing it. Oh, my God, I miss her. I love her. And this thing happens. She's freaking backstage. And <laughs> I, she walks out while I start to play the first chords, three, four timing, you know, C, G, A minor, F, the whole, like, you know, the thing. And I start, I like, I can't even, I, oh, my God, she's here. I freak out. I'm like crying. I'm on stage. We sing it, we kill it, knock it out of the park. Everybody's crying in the audience. And it's like, so that song is just like, it's a mountain that I've been trying to climb. And that's yeah. like a feat of mine that I need to just handle. I just need to like man up and fucking do it. <laughs> <laughs> in due time, man, in due time. Yeah, due time, brother. Yeah. Oh, man. It was hour already, dude. What the heck? Uh, yeah, it's getting getting pretty close to that hour yeah just time just flies and like i've been this is my third my fourth time doing this it's like three times with other musicians and another like my uncle we were talking about finances and stuff but it's yeah it goes by so fast you just you know you just have so much to talk about totally, but totally. i don't know if you want to if you if you want to do this again or if you want to perform something i don't know if you have your guitar or something <laughs> like that Let's let's do it again, and I'll I'll set it up to where I can uh, I can perform like real, do do the damn thing, and maybe I'll bring Larissa in, and we'll do you make a home. Okay, yeah, that'd be that'd be awesome. That'd be. And we'll really- be at our new house. We'll be at our new house in Ashland, Oregon. So it'll be like super vibey. We'll like perform on the deck or something. It'll be cool. Yeah, that's I. I'm telling you, I think this is the way to go. Is like just kind of setting things up like this, and and having people just pop in and out and. And uh, check in and show them their love. But, yeah, yeah. Dude, yeah, man. Thank you for having me on, man. I, it's been uh, it's been cool to go through all the experiences I have in my life so far, and then come back, see your face, like remember where, like our mom, you know, just remember and really like give homage, pay gratitude to those who have helped me get to where I'm at. So that's one of you, bro. I thank you, man. I appreciate it. Well. Thank you so much for, you know, taking the time out and, you know, talking to me and um, the people. What I'm going to do is I'll probably put this up on, on my YouTube page and all the social medias, you know, maybe in a couple of weeks and stuff. But uh, tell the people where they can, you know, find you and listen to yourself and support your music. Uh, Spotify would be great. If you guys got Spotify, just look up Adam Knight. Um, I like directing traffic there. But if not. You can look me up absolutely anywhere on any streaming platform. You just put in Adam Knight with a K. All right. Well, thank you so much again for for taking the time. And uh, take care, guys. Boom. Thanks, Justin Brown. You too, man. See you. Later.